All right, we are live. What's up, everyone? My name is Ty Smith. I'm the host of the Data Up podcast. Welcome to welcome back to another episode. Today, I have my two good friends, Safe Ad- at Jerby and it's Anthony Jerby. <laughs> <A-Jerby. laughs> <A-Jerby. laughs> and Anthony Martinez helping coaches scale um, with ads and content. Um, we were trying to prepare for that before that, but welcome, guys. Thank you so much for hopping on the uh, the podcast today. How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Thank you for having us. Having us. Of course, of course. So um, I find you guys extremely interesting. Uh, we, we obviously got connected through a, a mutual uh, business contact. And I, I really like everything that you guys got going on, your dedication to what it is that you guys do and the, the, the way how professional you guys are and how you handle about um, carrying your business. And I'm glad that I'm able to sit down with you guys today and kind of pick your brain a little bit more on how you guys operate Um what your background is and how you guys got into where you guys are today as as partners. For sure. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. We're happy to have you so, here. So. Awesome. So, yeah, that, uh, yeah. so yeah. So to go into it, like where did you guys how did you guys meet? Um, where did you guys kind of get your 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 ground inside of uh inside of this digital marketing space? And yeah, and then how did you guys come together to uh, form funnel partners? For sure. I'll I'll start with my story. Go ahead. All right, so I had a sales background in the past. I actually did a front a face-to-face conference sales where I sold big companies, multi-million dollar companies uh, from different backgrounds, different countries. And I never had any experience directly with online. So my first experience was actually with client acquisition. Uh, not sure if you guys know, a client acquisition.io uh, with the uh, founder, Serge Guattari. So that was my first ever uh, place and basically introduction to the online space. Uh, and there, that, that's where I got to know uh, Anthony. We both actually worked as uh, appointment setters directly using uh, Surge's accounts and uh, being on the front end of the marketing, uh, handling all of the conversion. Yeah. And yeah, it was an absolute blast. Amazing blessings getting to know Anthony at the time. And the experience with client acquisition also was very interesting. So for me, it was the first ever experience to just come into the online space. And I found myself crushing it right off the gate. Right off the gate. 100 and, calls? Yeah, 100 calls <laughs> in the first month. Actually, I did 10 calls in my first ever day, completely cold, which is insane. So I feel like, okay, I was, the sales experience that I had definitely worked. <laughs> and it was, in, it was in very good spot. Uh, and yeah. It was a blessing. Uh, we got kind of close within that group. Uh, and, and little by little, we just worked our way into uh, working as consultants within the company. We, ha- we worked with lots of uh, founders uh, in the back end. And we also trained a lot of setters. Anthony was uh, directly training like 20 plus setters from yeah, all areas with different founders, good amounts. And yeah, we had a lot of experience again in a multi seven figure company consulting firm yeah so yeah just kind of going off like what safe was saying uh for me it kind of started like i was just on youtube and i was looking just i i think a lot of people start like this like they just get into the agency space like on youtube like make make money online uh just started like really diving into it and then that's where like i found a uh, surge and then i was like i tried to do my own agency i like jumped into it super quick and then I started my own agency and I realized I was like, yo, I don't have any skills. Like, I don't, I don't know how to like, like, what am I going to sell? I remember at the time, like short form content was super like popular. I was like, okay, let me just find an editor or something like that. Let me just, let me just sell short form content. It's just a commodity at the end of the day. Right. And I learned the hard way. I was like, all right, like, let me learn some skills. Let me actually be valuable within the market so I can offer like a good service. So then that's how I ended up just getting more into like appointment setting I started hearing about appointment setting, like, oh, like it's, it's really in demand. I know a lot of companies are looking for appointment setters that are good. So I joined like a program that was like specifically like around like appointment setting. And then I ended up joining a uh, client acquisition. Like Safe said, both of us were like setters in the company. I was like one of the top setters in there. And then eventually ended up switching to like still doing setting, but eventually just consulting other companies which was, I I honestly, that's the thing is that I realized that consulting other companies was, I enjoyed it a lot more than rather just doing the appointment setting because the thing with appointment setting was that it was 
it was fun, but it got to the, like a certain point where I felt like I could like help, help out more like in other companies. Cause I, I we're seeing things on the back end side of things. Right. So we see a lot of the things that's, that's like going on within a company, like how it's operating team members, like all this stuff. So I'm like thinking, I'm like, yo, like, there's not much I can really do, you know, um, with appointment setting. And there's a lot more things that I like with consulting, you know, being able to see other businesses and, and give them advice, stuff like that, consulting them really. And yeah, I just got to a point eventually where um, both of us just ended up leaving the company. We just wanted to do, you know, our own thing. And then we just really just joined forces. So glad to meet safe as well as you, Ty. It's a pleasure. Um, but yeah, we just ended up, we ended up just joining forces and um, yeah, now we're here. Yeah, man, that's great. Like, and what I find, like, you know, everyone that we, everyone that's in getting into this, like, digital marketing space, I think we mm -hmm. all kind of have, like, the same or similar, like, similar journey. I, my, my yeah. journey was, like, similar to yours, Anthony, where I was just going on YouTube. I was trying to figure out, like, different things that I can do to figure out, like, how, what offer or, like, what service can I sell? Like, how can I get my the thing that I want to get out to people, how, how, how can I do that? How can I figure that out? And of course, then you run across people like Serge, um, his whole team, and then uh, other similar creators in, in that space. And yeah. I kind of went down the same, like the same path of just like, I didn't go down the appointment setter path, but I was like, I want to do Facebook ads. And that's like, what's most mm -hmm. attractive to me. And I need to figure out a way how to properly market this. And then that's when you start falling down that, 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 uh, I guess like the rabbit hole of figuring out like how to actually develop a good offer because you don't want your service to be a commodity. I just can't be out here. You'll you'll realize really quickly for anyone that's new out there to the whole digital marketing space, when you figure out what it is that you whatever services that you want to offer, you got to realize that you just can't offer that service. You have to learn how to turn it into a proper offer where people where it separates you from the entire market. Because if you try to go out there and just say, hey, I want to do Facebook ads for you, you're going to you're going to learn real quickly that yeah. you have a lot of competition there's a lot of people yeah. out there so you got to understand yeah. how to um you got to understand how to build offers and make them effective and that's the reason why i'm so excited about talking about um meeting with you guys inside of this episode is because we're going to get into that we're going to be talking more about lead generation and content and like how to warm people up with um the correct type of content to get them to convert over to um you know good sales but before we get into that i want to touch base with you guys because you know a lot of people are skeptical with the idea of like having a partner or going into partnership with someone and it can be um there's a lot of like negative stigma that's like tied to that what what makes you guys this partnership different and like what made it more um what made it like a good idea and solid for you guys to want to come together and to be able to trust each other to to scale it up from this point that's I'll, a good I'll question start. I'll really good question yeah so honestly at first i was all, like one of those people that was like a little bit skeptical about partnerships like yo like why can't i really just like do this myself but i realized like working with safe as well the thing the thing is to have a good partnership you have to be different you can't be the same because if you if you guys are both the same you're not offering any anything to each other you know what i'm saying yeah and the first thing i noticed is that me and safe are pretty different like we have we're, we're good at different things right and that's the thing is that when we started pushing this offer like things just started moving super super quick and we know what we we know where we're trying to go and just having two people because there's a lot of things in business right when you're you, you know where you want to go and you start working towards it you get a bunch of these little these little blind spots these little problems these little issues that just hit you in the face and it's like bro like are you serious like just little stuff that's just like annoying and i was telling safe this i was like bro like just having you like i don't i don't think i would be able to to even get to like where we are now like just with these all these little things and we're, we're able to move super quick and it's because we have each other and not only that it's like there's two minds as well so it's not like it's just my perspective it's also i get to hear his perspective on certain things yo bro what do you think about this this vso give me some feedback how could it be better sends it to me as well bro let me how could i make this better and i think that yeah, that's one of the most important things is that you have to pick somebody who's really who's going to be honest with you and wants the best for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's definitely something that I notice about safe is he's a very honest person, which I really, really admire. 
I want them to be as honest with, with me as possible. I don't want somebody just being like, oh, bro, this is good when it's like, bro, don't lie to me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm the same with safe. I'm pretty honest to him. Like, I'll be like, bro, I don't like this, bro. I, I like this is good. Change this, change this, change this. Right. And I just realized that, yeah, you just need somebody who's one different, like has different skill sets than you. Safe's a lot better at like more sales. Um, I'd say like, like sales marketing type of stuff. And there's other things that I, I think that I'm a little bit better at. Um, but we both have our strengths, which makes both of us working together. It just helps so much more. And we're able to just move as a company together so much faster, so much more effectively. And not only that, we're able to help our clients even more and just serve them better. So I just think that, yeah, like at first, like I said, just going into it, I was a little bit skeptical. Um, but we funny thing is when we, when we started pushing uh, offers, we were pushing our own offers, right? And then... We were like pushing similar offers and then we we were like yeah let's just partner up on fulfillment and then we'll just help our clients and then we like got a couple clients and then we're like bro why don't we just like partner up together we're like what are we doing like it doesn't even make sense because it's just so much more effective together you know what i mean i was like bro, what are we even i was like what are we doing i know safe had it in the back of his head but i was kind of against it at first not against it but like i was hesitant towards it right and then i was just like yo that's a good point. Like, why don't we just, why don't we just partner up together? And yeah, I mean, I haven't had any regrets since it's just been super helpful with just moving things forward and safe sauce. I have, I have yeah. to agree to be honest. I'll, I'll <laughs> give you my, my, give you my end of the story. My part was like thinking of entrepreneurship in general. It also, it always gives you that thought of like, I'm just alone. now. I can do this by myself. Mm. I have yeah. to build this big empire by yourself. And Low key, the kind of media is pushing that thought, like one man business, uh, one man growth, so on and so forth. So I've always had that mentality before going into entrepreneurship in general. Mm -hmm. However, I have to be honest. When again, think the, the the thing about our partnership in specific, which is again, it's a great question, time. The thing that yeah, I really love the most, question. it's like things came naturally. Yeah. No, n none of us pushed it. Like mm -hmm. it came completely on its own and it was absolutely beautiful especially to me we were mm. just like having the same thoughts and little did we know that we have the same values the same interests the same vision and we yeah. both admire helping other founders and other people yeah. because again if you get back to the roots of why we started this anthony would definitely agree with me and we would confidently say the reason why we do what we do is to be able to change lives Yep. And the absolutely great thing about being in this position, which I'm completely blessed to be, is not only did I find Anthony having, again, so many other skills that I'm not the best at, but at the same time, he's always there making sure that we're always moving into the right direction. And what I felt like, literally, if you go, we were talking about this previously uh, before the call, we got so much better within just content itself in just mm -hmm. one month of posting apps every single week. Again, acceleration of growth is phenomenal. Having the, the right partner in place. Just again, the key word is the right partner because this either could go really, really well or it could go really, really wrong, which yeah. why I understand a lot of people may be a little bit skeptical about having a partner. Just like, again, being in a relationship. I'm a married exactly. man. Like I understand this. Choosing the right partner, either it would go really well and your life would just go in the right direction or the other way, the opposite. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think, I think that's really powerful. And I'm inspired that you guys were able to find each other and continue to, you know, grow and catapult to that. Cause similar, similar to like my, my start in the space, like I found my mentor and um, it's a little bit of a different, like different relationship, but like he put me on to so many other things that I would have, that would have took me like two to three more years to mm. find out by myself if I never had that person like right next to me to, you know, to teach me how to um, do certain things and the mindset that I needed to have and certain things that just you can't learn through watching a bunch of YouTube videos or yeah. reading a bunch of books, like having that direct person next to you that you can like bounce ideas off of and get have same or similar struggles will catapult you a hundred X into whatever it is that you're trying to do because you just have that person that you could bounce ideas off of that. And that's, that's really like, that's really invaluable. So, yeah. um, 
100%. so yeah i guess like with that with that being said like kind of hopping more into like funnel partners um what is it that can you guys like give like a, a breakdown of like what it is that you guys do and like what's your i guess like what your offer is and what you, what it is that you're providing to your uh to your clients all right and to not make it super long we really like work directly uh closely with with coaches doing around 5 to 20k a month and we specialize in building infrastructure where we try to automate the entire acquisition with a completely new system that helps them get inbound leads and build the brand and become really, really good at the art of content and selling and content and being in a very leveraged position where from their brand, they get people coming to them, very qualified, feeling that they spoke to their souls and they're in a position to get to that 50, 100K, not only scale because again, everyone can scale, but scaling with ease and with consistency. So that's what we try and do our best in, uh, in achieving. And we work b typically between four to 12 weeks with a client and we try to keep their growth with them. And uh, our backend offer is one of those clients that we do get the 50, 100K. Uh, if they want to actually scale to 500 and more, then we can definitely get into a partnership together and uh, do things a lot more closely consulting one-on-one and having a bit more hands down with them along the road. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And that kind of, uh, that leads me to like some of my, my next questions, which I'm sure there are things that you guys are, that you guys analyze with and with your past experience inside of other agencies, mm -hmm. um, has helped you out a lot with like, what is like a common mistake that people have when they're like developing their offers or something that you guys, um, yeah, I guess like what is a common mistake that people have when they're trying to develop their offer? Like what makes them mm. like miss the ball when they're trying to put their put their offer out there to the market to um, make question. it effective? Yeah, I would say like two major things. The first thing is like don't offer something that you think that people want. You have to actually test and see what the market really wants because you can think, oh, this the market wants this. But in reality, they, they may not want that at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. And. When you're selling to the market, nobody's, you know what I mean? Nobody's going to buy from someone who's selling from some something that they think the market wants. It just doesn't even make sense. And another thing too that I realized is once you really build like a good personal brand, like you have good content, people don't really, like obviously you, you have an offer, right? But people don't really come into buying in, oh, what is your offer? Are you guaranteeing this crazy amount of thing? It's not like, it's not like a crazy grand slam offer as we know, you know, we know Hermosi, the book that came out, like everyone started doing like grand slam offers. Um, but I'm not saying those don't work, but I realized that having a personal brand will always be better than just like a killer offer that you need to guarantee everything. Because when you're able to back up what you're saying with trust, credibility and value on top of that, it just, it's always going to be better than just, saying these crazy claims because we see a lot of people in the market now the market's getting more sophisticated where people are just saying these crazy claims oh i came to you 100 appointments a month it's like bro like <laughs> that's insane and i could care less about 100 appointments a month like how many of those are actually closing like as a founder it's like that's not what it's about it's not about appointments that's another discussion but at the end of the day like i think it's like i said it's two really big things it's actually building a personal brand and, and giving people what they want a transformation it's not about the actual like mechanism you know what i mean it's like giving them that transformation where they can see it and after watching all of their content they just they're buying into not only the transformation but into you your personal brand that's what i would say is like the two main things for sure yeah, yeah i have to agree i have to agree i would maybe say um everybody is emphasizing on getting a better offer where mm. we're at a point in 2023 everybody has a good offer mm. almost everyone has a good <clears throat> offer unless you're living under a rock you would have a very good decent offer it's not really an offer that's not making your business grow it's not having to get your brand out there and get people to trust you to even believe that whatever your mechanism that you're offering in the in the first place is actually working. So they're trying to solve a problem that doesn't even exist, which is yeah. what we find is the most crazy with <laughs> most in this market, especially coaches that we work with. Like they're searching to, f to fix a problem that doesn't exist. 
Like you don't have leads, but you're you're trying to get a better offer. Like, bro, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And that, that makes that makes sense. I and I guess like with like, you know, um, and this is something I've been like kind of con trying to contemplate on and get more insight on with like the market like being so flooded with like everyone having really good offers and everyone being able to kind of just like you know piggyback off of each other in the way that they go about like putting their putting their stuff out there like what are ways that people can start differ differentiating themselves over a longer period of time as you know as people continue to as you know marketers um heard this phrase i forgot who it was from but like marketers like ruin everything so it's only a matter of time until eventually like something that everyone is doing is going to no longer there's no longer just going to be trust in the market when people see the same thing over and over and over and over again. So how do you guys, what are you guys' thoughts on like innovating to get past the curve of that so that you always stay in front of, um, so you stay in front of the market like fresh and not look like everybody else? I would definitely say question. messaging, messaging and positioning. Look at what everyone is doing and do the complete opposite, literally. Look at what everyone is trying to push, thinking that it would work, and do the absolute complete opposite. Absolutely the complete opposite. And here's why. Br building your brand, you have to be in a position to actually open up and express who you are. Because like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Anthony said earlier, people buy into you before they even think about buying into your stuff. And at this stage of, of, of like the selling and the online space in general, People are getting more and more and more smart with picking up the people, like the, the programs, the coaching, the founders, the places to like invest in. Because again, most of them have been burned out in the past. So now everybody's being extremely cautious and they're trying to really, really dig deep. So nine times out of 10, if you really see someone buying a big thing from somebody else, it's most likely they've been watching them for almost like two, three months. And they've been really understood and, and valued to know what they did and how effective their stuff is. And they're already at a stage where they're convinced they want to get from them. So if you don't have a brand and content out there and you're trying to be completely different from the rest of the market, you will be like every other next person that really yeah. will, will not have your business succeed at the end of the yeah. day. And yeah. you could have, the thing is with the personal brand too, you could have the same offer as somebody else. But what makes you different is you. It's what people are buying. It goes into when people are buying into you. It's the content that they're watching. That's you, the little things that, you know, the little beliefs that you have that are similar, that they really relate to, to you as a person, little stuff like that can, maybe it's something about, you know, about their story or about your story where you really, really relate with it. And it's like, okay, this, these two people kind of have similar offers, but I'm going to go with him instead, just because I actually really relate with this person. Another thing too, I would say is just pay attention. Like definitely like safe said, be different and innovate, but also it's important to really pay attention to the market and what other people are doing as well. And it continually, obviously like I, this is something I, I talk to safe about as well too. It's like our product is going to continuously evolve, like continuously. It's not like one set certain thing. And this is how it's going to be like forever. Like, no, like the market is evolving. There's new things coming out. It's like you, you have to, you have to evolve with these things that are coming out or else like you're just going to be left behind. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah I would just say definitely person, but personal branding is definitely going to help solve a lot of the market sophistication as well too. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Like for you to like, I think it's going to be, it's a hundred percent essential. And for the people that don't, focus on building a personal brand over these next like in this next stage of of where we're at currently in the market mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to build that trust with people to get them because then they're going to really be you know pigeonholing themselves into into one into one area and then it, you're just going to be looked at as another mark as like another like scammy marketer the best like like you guys were just talking about the best way to go about building um trust within the market and having people go with you and be able to spend those high those high dollar amounts with you is by having a personal brand showing your expertise over a long period of time and kind of playing a playing the long game because those yeah those the people that have personal brands like like we do are the people that will 
close people over a longer period of, of time, regardless if they want to work with us on the first time that they see a piece of content that we make today, or if it's content that they continue to consume over like the next six months where mm -hmm. you have a, you have a way larger hold on that individual than the random marketer does that just pops up on their timeline. Absolutely. I feel like if, if, if you're a founder out there and you're not doing content, oof, you're just crazy. <laughs> like you're crazy. You're the opportunity cost is, out. is just insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, Especially right now. Like it's, it's, it's just, crazy. it doesn't make any sense to me. If, if, yeah. and I talked to, to some of these like prospects and founders, they like, it's as crazy as I keep hearing this. Like, I don't need to, to, to push any content when outreach is working. Like, yeah, if it's like, imagine if you have content and you do outreach at the same time. Imagine if you do any acquisition process, whatever it is, if it's paid, non-paid, organic, whatever the case might be, and you do have the content in place, you just double down everything within your process just because yeah. you're putting yourself out there. If you're not putting yourself out there, people will immediately not believe in whatever it is you offer. Yeah. Yeah. doesn't matter what if you're means. if you're relying on outreach too it's like you're like you said ty it's like with content you're really playing it long term because it's like there's only like i'm not saying that outreach doesn't work like obviously outreach works but it's to a certain point like i think that there comes a certain point within your business where it's like all right outreach has just not been cutting it for me anymore and then it's where you really really start going hard personal brand start running ads right and the thing with outreach is that you can't have your business relying on it you can't. It's not sustainable. If you want something that's sustainable, you need to build all of those sales assets that are just going to sell people over time. Not today, but down the line. You're building for the next months that's going to come. You're not when you're putting out a video on YouTube that's going over whatever, like a VSL. You're not just selling during that exact time. You're selling for the next months, maybe the next year. People sell themselves on that video. And that's why content is so powerful, bro. Like it's it's just insane. Digital yeah. real estate. It's crazy. And with that, since we're since we're going deeper into like part of like the content, let's let's kind of talk about what are some of the ways that you can um what are some pieces of content that like someone's like listening to this right now? Like what are some con like what are I guess like content pillars that they can start doing right now or start using right now to start I start warming up their audiences and um to start helping them with like objection handling and stuff like that when it comes to getting you know warm people into your into your infrastructure of your of your personal yeah. brand like what are some what are some pieces of content that someone can start making today to start helping them uh develop this personal brand to help them yeah. uh warm up an audience over time yeah i would say like a lot of people really do complicate it it's really simple you can make stuff that's just valuable piece of content meaning like Anything that your ideal audience would, something that they would search up, like how to do, solve this problem, a certain problem that they're having, how to solve this problem, how to solve this problem, how to solve this problem, and just give valuable content and then just back it up with case studies. Once you sh show valuable content and then you just back it up with just undeniable proof, like people are, are going to buy from you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? If they really have that problem, like they're going to buy from you. They're going to buy from you at the end of the day. And same yeah, thing I would with say objections. Go ahead, say I would, I would just say, I would add to that, like, I think the two biggest things that anyone can start with is start with case studies and mm. uh, 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 like case studies and then value, value stuff to show your expertise. Those two are on top. There's, there's just, those two are non-negotiable. And the two that comes after those would be lifestyle and uh, personalized mm. videos that show more of who you are. Because yeah. again, you, when you, you are the business. You're selling yep. yourself, you're selling your brand. And the second would simply be, um, let me objection remember. Handling? Not objection handling, but. Uh, shifting beliefs, shifting beliefs. Shifting beliefs, there you go. Yeah. Shifting beliefs. Yeah. A really lot of, important. like a very, very big part of the market have absolutely no idea what works mm. and what doesn't. And even more importantly than what works and what doesn't, it's what works more and better and even like more efficiently than any other out. Because mm -hmm. again, as I've mentioned earlier, it's not about scaling. It's about how are you scaling? What are you doing to scale your business? 
And what are you doing to build a consistent business predictable outcomes? That's what's most important. People think that, yes, even with outreach, you can go to 100K. But yeah. do you want to live that life? Do you want to have 60 <laughs> uh, people, 60 VAs and 73 sales reps and 102 like, to get to 100? Is that really worth it? And that's the problem. People keep, like, again, shifting beliefs is a huge, a huge yeah. thing. So yeah. those are the four pillars I believe are the most important. Another thing real quick, just going off of what you said for shifting beliefs, and this is why content is so good, is because when you're either doing cold outreach or you're doing direct marketing, you're only you're only really selling to that 3% of the market that's ready to buy right now. And there's another part of the market who is problem aware, but they're just not ready to buy. There's another problem part of the market where maybe they need to get educated on the problem. And that's when they get sent over, they start seeing some of your content and you start shifting those beliefs. Well, now you're selling to a, a not just 3% of the market. You're selling to a way bigger part of the market and you're not limiting to who you can sell to. That's that's why shifting beliefs, it just opens up the door for so many more people to actually sell to, right? Super important. Super important. Dope, dope. And that leads me to my next question. Um, what like with with like using youtube via sales and stuff like that to even further mm -hmm. people down that process of like the whole content of um of one just like having them consume your short form content on whatever your platform of choice is if it's instagram TikTok, or or twitter or whatever how do you like when you start driving them to a youtube channel and using your youtube channel as an effective way to convert people even more with long form content like what are some of those um what are some of those winning aspects of a VSL that makes it really effective to get people to want to convert over? Good I'll, question. I'll, question. Yeah, that's a very good question. I'll simplify it very much here. So what makes a VSL extremely, extremely effective is uh, as soon as it starts, make sure to get into it. People don't have enough time anymore uh, and uh, their attention span is getting shorter and shorter and shorter every single day. So a VSL needs to be direct, effective and very valuable. Uh, mm -hmm. Two, you need to provide social proof because whatever claim or whatever issue you will solve, you need to make sure people are believing in whatever it is you're saying. Uh, that's two. And three, make sure to give them something that they can immediately use after they finish watching that BSL. And four, which is a lot of people miss this a lot, have a very, very clear call to action at the end of that BSL. Because after you do give that value and you're not clear of what you want your prospect to do after they've watched and got that value, then you just thrown it to the, to, to, to the water. Like there's no yeah. value in it whatsoever. Yeah. Another thing I would add on to that is just give people what they want. Like you have to label it as, as picture it or frame it is in the most valuable way you can for your audience. So for our example, our VSO, I think it's just, it's a really simple title, but it's just like how to get more coaching clients on Instagram. People that are coming to our funnel, who doesn't want more, more coaching clients, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. So you're just framing it in like a really valuable way. And then it's really just selling them through the entire process. Yeah. And as far as like, and then taking a step back to more of a wider view, when it comes to like messaging and developing your like ideal customer profile, like what are some, for people that are like listening right now, what are some actionable like tips of advice to find out like what their their target market like pain points are and like how they can position their content in a way to be able to um to effectively like reach them and, and hit what they hit what they hit what they want to hit as opposed to you know just making something that you think is going to relate to them but actually how do you how you position the content in a way um so you know that you're giving them what they want instead of what you think that they want I'll, I'll give a very easy answer to this. Very easy. Your back end should be a reflection of your front end. Meaning, your content shouldn't be subjects that you're getting out of thin air. Content should be you documenting what's going on with your business and your clients' businesses. So whatever it is you encounter within your process of getting the client, getting client businesses results, whatever it is you do encounter within your own journey or your client's journey, you should take and package that and then put it into content, which again, you're reflecting what you're actually doing to other businesses that would immediately find or relate to whatever it is you're pushing out. 
which would easily end up in converting to more and more clients down the road. And consistency as well, by the way. I feel like this is not enough people are talking about it. I know it might sound cliche, but be, be consistent with your messaging. Like, don't mm-hmm. talk about something today and then tomorrow, like, talk about something completely different. The market mm-hmm. loves consistency. Just make sure to yeah. stick to one thing that you know you can be good at, but say it in mm-hmm. different ways because mm-hmm. uh, Ty, might, Ty might be the person that uh, uh, it, it could be easily communicated in written marketing. Uh, Anthony might be a, a person that gets easy in, like, video format type of person-to-person interaction. You can say the same thing, but in different ways and in different formats. So you can make sure to hit different parts of the market. And you're winning, but you're still consistent with your messaging. Yeah, 100%. I would say another thing too is if you don't have enough data on the market, I would say you can really can test it by doing outreach. You can test it by by running ads. Uh, Sales calls as well can be super, super good from just getting data and being able to get your messaging really, really dialed. But if you do have you know, a good amount of data, I would say to really look at your perfect clients, like the clients that have gotten the most success that have, that have came through your program and just dive really deep into, you know, their, their like ideal um, avatar, like and build and build an avatar based around that and go into depth, you know, how much money are they making? Where were they at before? What were some of the things that they were doing before? Stuff like that. I would yeah. say really just take advantage of, you know, your ideal clients. And if not, then, then you can just, like I said, you can get more more data by either running ads or you can also do outreach as well. What were you saying, Safe? Sorry. I was going to say uh, to answer the parts where how to actually find that perfect avatar. The mm-hmm. perfect client is if you're if you're already advanced, if you've already had a couple of clients, Go, go check the one that you've brought the best results for and the ones that you find it easy to work with. That would represent the best client yeah. that you would most probably work yeah. with in the future and just yeah. replicate describing that specific yeah. person. However, if you're a complete beginner, you absolutely have no results, no client results, nothing. The best thing that you can do is, again, this is a small tip, get interviews and propose interviews to a different part of the market and get on actual interview calls. And by the way, you could actually end up closing somebody from those interview <laughs> calls. So if you do it, if you do it properly, yeah, and and within and within those calls, you can get to understand people. Because trust me, founders love having being in a spot and just speaking about their problem. They like to do it, especially if you don't feel like there's no pressure of uh, I'm I'm being sold to. Uh, that yeah. that's again a tip that can help. I would I just, say I just took some valuable notes on what you just on what you just said there. But go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I, bet. I would say one more thing to add on to that too. Safe said to look at your clients who who you've gotten really good results for. Also look at the clients who it was really hard to get results for and understand why. And then you can kind of repel those people within your messaging as well, so you can understand. Okay, this person is not a good fit because they are this type of person, and then you can repel that same type of thing within your ads, within your BSLs, within all of your, all of your content, just repelling those bad fits. Yeah. And with, um, so as far as like, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole point of everything that you guys are doing is that you want to qualify, you want to warm up these leads and get them as hot as possible before they even hop on these sales calls with you. With that being said, like, if, if any, are there any, like, what are, um, common sales objections, or if any, that you guys come across, even with running a running a funnel like this, like what are what are some of those questions or things that people may have a um, uh, yeah may have an objection to, if if any, with with this type of funnel. I would be the best person to answer this. I'm the yeah. one on the sales calls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the most objection that I'm getting would be also what our clients are getting, especially if they're amplifying the same funnel. Um, it's um, is this the best mechanism for me? Like mm-hmm. it's about like, am I the good fit for this? Does this work with me? Uh, and the second would be uh, how much money should I spend on ads? Everybody is being afraid of how much money to spend on ads. Uh, ads work. Okay, let me just break this down. Uh, it's just so interesting to me. 
people don't understand this, but it's pretty obvious uh, for the ones that do. Ads will always work. It's how efficient do you make the ad. It's what's tricky, right? The interesting part is the ones that are more successful with ads, they're very successful in making that ad very, very efficient. They get more out of what they spend. And the, and the thing is, so your question should not be, should I spend, on, like, am I going to spend more on ads? The question should be, how can I make my ad more efficient? Mm. And that's just a different angle people don't realize. So that's, again, something I'm getting a lot on sales calls. Uh, another one would be, um, uh, how can I be reliable without a website? It's just crazy to me that people still think a website is going to make your business successful. In terms of testimonials, case studies, your actual social page can actually work and be your landing page. It can work as a landing page. It could be the place where people can find your case studies, testimonials, lifestyle. It can actually be more powerful to get people to like you way faster than them visiting your website and having yeah. one video where they have to watch the whole of it to be convinced that they can buy from you or not. So that's another objection. Th those are the most, I, I would guess, definitely. Yeah. And yeah, I think I think that's really powerful because I know a lot of people, they, they get stuck up in like the vanity metrics of things, of like how certain things like look and stuff like that. And things are really not that complicated. Like you don't need a full-on website especially wow. at like this stage there's a whole different era like if you can literally if you just have a calendly link and good social media yeah. like that's all that you need to yeah. to get this thing up and going yeah. so um yeah i think people I have like limiting factors or beliefs into thinking that they need a website or thinking that they need more stuff than they need like no you can if you if you if you focus on your messaging you dial yeah. in on that and you make good yeah. content on your social media you can uh you can go a lot farther than that person that's fixated on having the perfect website. Yeah. Like if you that have no clients, perfect. if you have no clients and like you don't have any content out and you're worried about a website, like <laughs> let me just tell you, like, last bro, thing like you should be focused on. please do not worry about the website. Like please. Get go make clients. some content. Get Trust. Clients. Yes. Yes. Go get, get some clients. clients nope. And make some content as well too. <laughs> Websites are just, I don't know. I mean, if, if someone has them, it is what it is. But uh, we're, I would just say this. The market is changing very rapidly. And I think people are, are starting to see this and understand it. Like you said, Ty, like if you if you have some uh, a bunch of good content in your personal brand style and you just have like your calendar link, you could close someone just like that. It just yeah. creates friction. Like, it does. Again, it does. Like, like what's, what's the goal here? The goal is to get the leads and convert them to clients. A website is not going to do that. Like, again, what's the goal? What should we do about the goal? The goal is to get to convert them faster. Well, yeah. a website is not going to do that. Well, what yeah. would? Simply, yeah. if, uh, your actual social play page yeah. is going to convert them way faster. Like, if, if a lead came to Ty's page and they've watched three, four of, their, of his videos, he's already, like, already thinking about, okay, what this guy has to do? I need to mm -hmm. check him out. They maybe send a message. They maybe go check long-form content. They're going to dig deeper. Oh, yeah. who did he work with? What did he do? Oh, is he very effective? And then little by little, in a week or two, if, if your content is even better, even like in literally 48 hours, you can convert them to a client. They will yeah. book the call just to talk to you. That's how that's, powerful this funnel is. Yeah, and that's another thing too with, with setters that's really, really powerful is you get somebody that's conversating with you and you, and you can think that, or somebody else can think that it's really that person. It's not a, it's not a setter depending on, you know, what market you're in. People are smart though, but think about it. It's like, imagine if Hermosi just sends you a DM, but even if you know it's his setter, bro, I'm probably, I'm probably buying, bro. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, bro, it's, that's crazy. Like that's Hermosi. And that's that whole, that's where it's different from. Think about if you were to just go on his website and maybe you're considering buying something versus him sending you a DM and he's like, yo, he's like, what's up, man? And you start conversating and he, he books you and bro, I'm getting close. <laughs> you I'll, know what I I'll, mean? I'll say, I'll say this. I'll say this. Actually, this is a really good example. Uh, going, going back to your question earlier about should I have an offer? Do you really think people that are like founders that are making 10 million a year, do you think they know what Alex Hermosi's offer is? Exactly. Great. They don't know. They don't know his offer. Yeah. You see, you see, that's the thing. But personal brand is extremely powerful, but people do not 
see it or may they even know it in the back of their mind but they just don't take action on it like every mm-hmm. every other thing in life every other thing in life they know what they need to do yeah. but they still they they still don't do it you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Sure. spinning their wheels like doing doing the thing that they feel is going to be best for them but what's not actually going to be best for the for the business overall like yeah, getting stuck in that, getting stuck in that like feedback loop of yourself or be like, I've been doing this thing for so long, I should just continue to do it this way because you know, I this is this is what got me to where I'm at. Like that's not a good mindset to have. You should always have a growth mindset of being able to like push past and move forward to whatever is working best for the overall for the overall market and effectively putting yeah. yourself in a position to to scale to the next level. Because all businesses is it's it's you being competitive with yourself to level up yourself to get to the next level and not, um, you know, not be your, not be the, not be the number one person holding yourself back from being able to get to that next, uh, to that mm-hmm. next stage on like where you want to go. I like that. That's Absolutely. Great. I agree. Yeah. And with that being said, like, since we were just talking about a little bit about like, um, appointment setters, um, I guess like what, and you guys can touch on this as much as you want to, um, mm-hmm what i guess like when setting when training an appointment setter and having someone get in those conversations in the dms like what's what is the workflow like with that and how can someone obviously there's no i don't i don't ever really believe in like uh you know templates or like things that people can like copy completely when it comes mm-hmm. to like scripts and stuff like that i feel like when it comes to appointment setters and having conversations you want to make it sound as natural and as you know easy flowing as possible as opposed to just going off of a script and copy and pasting that to each individual person that's talking to you. Um, so like, what is the process like for you guys in, in regards to that, when you're having these conversations in the DMS, like how do you structure it? How do you go about, um, getting that person converted over and booked onto your calendar as soon as possible? Yeah, I can, I can, I I can simplify the uh, framework and Anthony could go in a little bit more depth around how, how it's structured. The framework is pretty simple. Uh, let's just get one thing clear. The more conversations you have, the more cash you will collect. End of the story. That's, that, that's how it should be. So if you're getting between 15 and 30 conversations every day, you should, and talking to quality leads, huh? not just any leads. If you're talking to 15 to 30 people qualified to buy your stuff every single day, then if you're not doing 50 to 100, then you're very bad at sales. And sales is a huge issue for you. But if you are, then your leads is, is, is your leads generation is not an issue and you're talking to the right people, you're setting and you're converting them to book calls, it's not an issue, then your sales is an issue. So the framework that we like to use is one, which is pretty obvious, get them to reply, right? Do whatever yeah. it is you need to do to get them to reply. That's number one. Uh, two, make sure to qualify that they're the perfect person that you need to speak with. As soon as they do reply, you have to qualify them. So if they're a coach, if they're a business owner, if they're a consumer, they have to have the things you're looking for in order to to finish the conversation. Uh, Three, you have to build some report, no matter how small it is, you have to build some report. Uh, It could be from them giving you a comment or it could be from you asking if they're checking your stuff, checking the content, whatever the case might be. Uh, Four, uh find the inefficiency so understand what's their problem what's the pain what's the actual desire that's unfulfilled for them or they're looking to achieve uh five see whatever it is they're actually doing right now to fix whatever issue that is and six offer to help them and get them to actually speak with you uh, uh on a quick chat and be in a position to offer if you can get them closer to where they need to be that's overall the framework of how we do this yeah and just going off of that like a couple other things too when it comes to appointment setting like some of the things that we learned and some of the things that we're training you know the setters that we're implementing is the first thing is just not to be needy at all that's probably one of the worst things that you can do where i see a lot of setters go wrong that's like one of the like most basic principles of sales like you cannot seem needy when you're trying to sell something right and it's the same thing with appointment setting you can't be needy in the dms you can't be super you know, just like anxious and just like trying to get somebody to, to reply at the end of the day, you go, at the end of the day, you have to be chill, but you have to mix it as well with 
also being responsive, you know, following up at the right times. Not you have that's where you have to find that balance of not being too spammy, too needy, but also being able to follow up at the right times. And because a lot of times, Safe and I have seen this. We'll, we'll, money is a lot of money is in the follow ups. When we follow up with someone, send them a VSO, they'll end up booking in right after that. So follow ups are definitely important, but you just have to know how to do them right. If you're following up with somebody like an hour after you send a message, two hours after you send a message, bro, chill out. <laughs> like I don't know if it's just me, but like if somebody's in my DMs, like following up with me like that, bro, I might block you. <laughs> like chill, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very obvious. Yeah. yeah, it's very obvious if you do it too soon. You got to make it like natural. Exactly. As if, like, yeah. yeah. So and I'm not sure. Things. And oh. I'm not sure if I need to mention this, but make sure you have a CRM if you're an appointment setter. Yes, like 100%. that's crucial, you right? You need, you, you need to know you have. You need to know which one is closer yeah. to being a booked call, which one is not. Yeah. You need to track yeah. the whole pipeline of what's going on. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a good point. Another thing too is being able. This is one of the things that I realized when I was an appointment setter that helped me book a lot of calls. Call as far as qualified calls because especially when we were selling B2B and the space is sophisticated, the offer is like appointment setting almost so, and I'm running Serge's DMs. So it's sophisticated mark. People know that he has a setter and stuff like that. One of the things that really helped me book a lot of appointments uh, with these qualified buyers, people who were a little bit more sophisticated was just being able to speak like the actual founder where they think they're talking to him. You know what I mean? And being able to speak their speak the founder's language and there's two things with that is you have to watch a lot of their content i'd already that that's almost how i really got into the space i watch a ton of surges content so i know i know the way he talks i know the way you know what i mean like i i've been through his whole funnel i was nurtured for sure bro <laughs> um but yeah you got to know how like the the founder talks it goes to watching their content you have to know the specific space that they're in too as well watch a lot of their content you have to know how people speak within that space because if you're not speaking, if you're not speaking like one of one of them, then they may detect it and they be like, all right, this appointment said or whatever. And that's that also goes with knowing the actual product better than the founder himself, him or herself. Like you have to know the product better than the founder because you're the, you're the one that's on the front line and the DM is talking to everybody. It's really important too, as well as getting feedback for your, even your messaging, even your sales objections, even your content and stuff like that. It's really really important so i would say not being needy when appointment setting and just knowing the product and the off like the offer super well as, and as well as the founder how they speak how they operate being able to to replicate how they speak in the dms I'll say the yeah and, and and pull the trigger when you find it by the way when you get yes. the chance to pull the yes. trigger pull the trigger yes. don't be and don't be too scared and and just 100 drag in the whole conversation yes you're not, that's you're not interviewing them that's another super uh, important point. One of the things I learned, once you get to a certain point, like you feel the tension in the conversation, you feel like it's getting dragged out and there's like, there's this awkward tension where like, all right, what are you trying to sell me? What are you trying to pitch me? You know, you're dragging the conversation out way too long. And that's why you have to get that perfect, you want to squeeze in all of the things that you need, like this, the stages that safe said, where, you know, you can qualify them. You can make sure that maybe they've seen content. You can make sure you know, they have an actual problem and yet they have a problem you could solve and then you got offer to help pretty much. But you want to be able to concise it so there's not, you don't leave room for things to go wrong because the longer it is, the more room, the more, the, how much more likely they're going to ghost you if there's a lot, a lot of um, space within, you know, the whole process. So you have to have it be efficient and as tight as possible so that it's part of the funnel so that it converts better. It's like little things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's a really good, that's actually a really, a really, really good point safe. And one, another, one last thing with that is when you see a particular problem, when you get one problem in the DMs that they're struggling with, don't go to other problems and ask about other problems. Hone in on that one specific problem that they've told you and just go right at it. If you need to get a little bit more information about the problem, the great, way. get some more information, pitch them eventually. But it's like, don't, ask different questions that's going to because you, you start a conversation here and then you know where you need to get to go to here if you're going over here you're not doing what you need to do you need to get to where it is that you want to go which is booking them on a call so if you're asking different questions about problems it's just like bro don't don't do that i would say just just 
get to where you need to be as, as efficient as possible too. And two things, and, just don't forget at all. Uh, ask for their permission before sending a VSL and yeah, ask their permission before sending the calendar. Yes. So things, th those are non-negotiable. Yeah, of course. And do you guys have like a, I guess like a limit on like the type of, or the amount of questions that you'd ask before you get to that point of trying to either get them onto that call or um, I guess like kind of having a framework to like how you set up those questions before you decide yeah. like, okay, this is time to get this we, person yeah. we, this call. We kind of we kinda customize it for each client yeah. because again, it, it all depends on the type of prospect you're talking to. Exactly. If you're talking to founders, it's different. If you're talking to consumers, it's different. Exactly. So the qualification might be slightly different. For mm -hmm. us in specific to speak to coaches, we're speaking to founders. So we have to at least... Yeah be in a position to realize that they have clients, they have case studies, and they are in a position to have a problem yeah. that we can actually solve. So yeah. if we're talking to someone that has all of the leads in the world, they're about to retire, they don't need any money, then what are we, what, what are we doing? Here? Like, yeah. You're all good, buddy. Yeah. You don't need us, right? So yeah. Yeah, you, need, yeah. you, need to have, you need to have the perfect fit client in order for you to get the best case studies and end up for you to actually always progress and skill in a healthy way, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, you guys are amazing. I really found a lot of amazing value out of this episode. I hope that everyone listening right now has also found a lot of good value out of this episode. There's definitely a lot of golden nuggets that we were able to get out of this almost hour-long conversation. So definitely go back, take notes. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of gems dropped, most definitely. Um, so before we before we hop off of here, um, where where can everyone find you guys? Um, and any last words or comments that you guys want to put out there to the people? Uh, sure. I, would, I would say this. Uh, if you want to take anything out of this call, if you want to take anything out of our funnel, out of our advice, become super good in content that you can do mm -hmm. most of the selling and most of the marketing in one spot, which is in your content. You wouldn't yes. have to worry about any conversion. You wouldn't have to worry about any sales. You wouldn't have to worry about a thing. Make yeah. the content crazy good and you should be in a very very good position yes. to literally build the best business ever and help a lot of people uh and uh, any last words anthony bro? yeah I, going on top of that too i would say like i don't think a lot of people realize this but being able to sell on content is a skill that you can learn it's a very valuable skill that you can actually learn and i think it comes a lot with putting in the reps and just seeing what works what doesn't work and just you know being you on camera and like I said, just putting in the reps. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything covered. I just want to say thank you, Ty, bro. It was awesome having yeah. us having us here. Thank I really you. appreciate you, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ty. I appreciate it, man. I absolutely yeah. loved it. Loved it. I hope I hope everybody loved it too. Yeah. And uh, if you want, it's like an hour. If you if you any if you guys want to any, know any anything about us, you can find us on IG and YouTube, Funnel Partners. Funnel very partners. very simple, very easy. And uh, yeah, don't be don't be shy to send a message. Awesome. And yeah, you guys, I, I second this funnel. This is a funnel that is actively on my Instagram. This is a funnel that's actively on their Instagram and their clients and our, our similar clients in, in that realm. So definitely take uh, take everything that you learned from this uh, from this interview. Go apply it, put action to it yep. and implement. Um, yeah, implement. That's the most important 100%. thing. So with that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to today's episode. I am Ty Smith, your host. This is the Data Podcast, and until next time, I will speak to you guys. Peace. Peace. Cheers.